For more on whether the Fed's latest plan will work and what that means for politicians and lawmakers, we're joined by the Cato Institute's Director of Financial Regulation Studies and also a former Republican Senate Banking Committee aide, Mark Calabria. Mark, uh, nice to talk with you. And, uh, you know, this QE2 and all the criticisms, that's just fueling the Republican discontent on the Fed. It, it really is. I mean, a lot of this goes back to uh, 2008 with the bailouts and with the TARP. And Bernanke played a very big role getting the TARP passed in Congress. Uh, and as you recall, it was really the Democrats in the Senate get, that got him renominated. It, right. Almost all of the opposition to his nomination was on the Republican side. So this is something that's been building for a while. Now, of course, part of this is a, a feeling on the part of Republicans that you simply cannot inflate your way to prosperity. Right. Uh, certainly, you could argue that some of this is political and that, you know, if you are a saver, you're someone who lives off fixed income, you might be more likely to vote Republican. And so there's certainly constituent interests behind this, but mm -hmm. there's also some philosophical basic differences in just economics and macroeconomics behind this. Right. I mean, the Republicans have expressed a lot of concerns about the, the budget deficit, the fiscal deficit. Exactly. Um, okay. So can the lawmakers or Republican lawmakers do anything to, quote unquote, neutralize what the Fed has done? Well, I mean, the short answer is, you know, yes, in theory they could, and that the Federal Reserve is obviously a creature of Congress, so they could change anything they wanted to with it. But in the political environment going forward, they're unlikely to. Uh, Geithner, in, in to that extent, Obama are very big fans of Bernanke and the Fed. So anything that really changed the Federal Reserve would really would be vetoed by the president. And I think they'd be very difficult to get something to the Senate that would make a difference. But all that said, you know, from my time working on the Banking Committee, my experience is that the Fed and other bank regulators do tend to bend a little bit toward what the majorities in Congress want. Now, they don't break their positions, but they bend them a little bit. So I suspect that Bernanke has already made a few calls to some of the new Republican leaders. He's starting to do some visits. Mm. And so there really will be an effort to try to appease some of the Republicans. Like I say, he won't go all the way, but I think he's going to make some attempt to meet them halfway. But what, so they won't get everything that they want. But Mark, what would he yes. say in those phone calls to try to appease them? Well, the first thing I think he's going to try to do is he's going to try to explain what he's doing. He's going to try to say, you know, this is why this is going to work. You know, we want to try to bring employment down. This is going to get lending going again. So his first thing will, that he's going to do is try to defend his actions, try to, to walk them through. Now, I don't think that's going to meet with a lot of success. I, I think to a degree, and this was really driven partly by the TARP in that it wasn't Paulson as much as Bernanke that got this over the hump in terms of congressional support. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of a lot of members, and I think on both sides of the aisle, feel like they were hoodwinked a little bit when it came to the TARP. Right. They don't believe it was necessary then. They don't believe it's necessary now. And they really took Bernanke at his word. So he's got a lot of work to do, in my opinion, in terms of rebuilding credibility among Republicans. Uh, but I think he's going to try to do that. I and mean, that's going to be his job. One of his job number ones to try to get people back into this. Now, I think what, in, after he explains to them why he's doing what he's doing, he's really going to sit here and say, I hear you. We can get out of this. You know, we have an exit strategy. Right. You know, we'll but, do this on a timely basis. But, so I think he's going to say, I hear your concerns. But, but Mark, we saw in Jekyll Island, though, that Bernanke um, was very defensive. I mean, could he fight back? Oh, yes. I don't really think that he's going to. I mean, you know, there's one thing to fight back among your academic peers. I mean, that's sort of expected in academia. There's nothing as hostile as an academic presentation. I mean, there's supposed to be that pushback. I think he's going to defend this to the press. But I think he's not going to take that tone with Congress. He understands that he needs to win them to his side right. rather than defeat them in public debate. So I do think he's going to try to make them hear uh, yeah. you know, his point of view. Now, the other part of this right. is, and we heard this with Governor Warsh, is that okay. the Republican concerns are going right. to give continued weight uh, to okay. uh, people who were skeptical about what All he's right. doing. Mark, we've got to leave it there. But thanks so much, Mark Calabria.